Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert, one of the pastors here, and we're continuing our look at the book of Matthew. And uh, I just want to uh, pause, and before we get into our passage today in chapter two, I want to encourage you, if you're not uh, reading through the Gospels or haven't done this in a while, let me encourage you to spend some time uh, reading. Uh, maybe since we're going through Matthew, read Matthew. Uh, but the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are referred to as the Gospels because they highlight the life, the teaching, the death and resurrection of Jesus. They are all about Jesus. And uh, uh, every time I get a question from someone, hey, what should I be reading in the Bible? I, I, I point them to the Gospels because we say, hey, we love and follow Jesus. And the way we get to know him better is by reading about him. And so uh, let me encourage you, if you're not uh, reading a place, jump in with us in the book of Matthew. And uh, the good news is, if you're like, hey, what's that passage mean? You have a reference point for us now. Uh, also, last year, we taught through the entire book of Luke. So that's another one. You can go through Luke. And if you need some help in a passage, you can refer back to our website and our sermon archives there and dive into that. But the good thing about scriptures, no matter where you read, if you're in the Gospels, you're in the Old Testament, you're in the New Testament and some of the letters, all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for us. Uh, that's First Timothy, uh, by the way. And, and the good news is that whatever we're reading, there's something useful from God to our life. Uh, a couple weeks ago, as Chad kicked this off, or a couple days ago, actually, he talked about the genealogies of Jesus and, and this archive of the family history of Jesus that might seem like something useless that actually is very useful and profitable for us. And whether it's things like that or like today's passage that seems almost like a passing comment uh, about uh, the, the life of Jesus, it's useful and profitable for us. So Matthew chapter 2 is our passage starting in verse 13. And it says this, it says, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take this child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet out of Egypt. I called my son. Again, this, this almost seems like just some passing comment about events, and they went here and they did this. Let's get to the, the good stuff, right? Well, this is actually good stuff. There's, there's some important things there for us to take away from this, to understand God better, to, to learn and to grow in this. So I've got uh, kind of three big takeaways for us out of this. The first is that, that Matthew helps us see fulfilled prophecy. More than any of the other three Gospels, the book of Matthew highlights the fulfilled prophecies of Jesus. And by that, I mean in the Old Testament, there were prophets that said, hey, the Messiah, the, the, the Savior who's coming, he's going to do these things. And, and he quotes one for us here about how he would come out of Egypt. And, and as you study God's word, uh, most scholars agree there's uh, upwards of 300 direct prophecies that are fulfilled directly by Jesus. There's even more if you want to count loose connections and fulfillments, but the real concrete ones, uh, about 320, 325 or so, very direct one-to-one -one prophecies and fulfillments. And the reason that matters so much to us and to the, the gospel writer Matthew here is because it shows that Jesus isn't just another baby born in the first century. He's not just another man that lived. He's not just another religious leader. He is the Son of God who fulfilled incredible prophecies that it would be impossible to coincidentally happen by any one person. So we first see the importance of these fulfilled prophecies, but we also see at the very forefront here the opposition that existed for Jesus. It's not just once he began teaching and making waves there with the prophecies and Sadducees and religious leaders. It's here at the beginning. Even as, a, as an infant or toddler, there's opposition against him by the governments and rulers there, which is instructive for us because it shows that, that our world is full of evil and evil is always in opposition against good. The world is always pushing back on the, the light of Jesus with its darkness because it understands that light always beats darkness, which means that we should never be surprised that wherever we align our lives to the call of Jesus, that there might be opposition from the, the evil areas of our world pushing back against that. But with that, the other thing that we see here from the, the life of Joseph is the importance of obedience. Joseph was instructed here what to do and he acted in obedience. 
uh, we'll, we'll continue on to see the, the tragedy that happened following this. But, but Joseph had to make a decision. Is he going to act in comfort and convenience, or is he going to act in obedience to what God had instructed him to do? And really, as our life as followers of Jesus, obedience is one of the most important things. Obedience to God's instruction is so vital. If we want to be growing in our relationship with Jesus, it means we need to be obedient, even in those places that are uncomfortable, even those places that are inconvenient. Look, I don't know about you, but I hate moving. And so if I would have been Joseph, like, hey, move to another country, I'm like, do I have to? Do, is there another way? Can we just like enter the witness protection program? Can I just change my name? I'll grow a beard, put sunglasses on. It'll be fine. You know, no, I'll, I'll be obedient even in those places where it's uncomfortable, where it's inconvenient, where it's not favorable. And that's what our call is. Our call is to get to know God through reading his word, through spending time in prayer and worship. And wherever we see and feel the leading, whether it's direct instruction from scripture, whether it's the conviction of the Holy Spirit in our heart, it's the prompting of the Holy Spirit to act, we need to walk in obedience. Because when we do that, great things happen and we get closer to God, and we see his provision and his goodness show up, just like Joseph got to see as he saved his, his new family from tragedy by walking in obedience. So today, that's my prayer for you, that, that you would get to know God better through his word as you dive in to get to know Jesus and his teaching better, but that would prompt you to walk in greater obedience to him and what he's calling you to do in your life, and the places where you maybe want to do that, and even the places where it's uncomfortable or unpopular, I pray that you would walk in obedience to him today. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.